Welcome to On The Beat everyone, I'm Troy Thompson. Joining me in the studio today is Dr. Ricky Johnson from Gastroenterology and Associates of Columbus and today we're talking all about gallstones. Welcome to the show my friend. Thank you Troy. Okay, I want to ask you, I know this might sound naive, I know gallstones are not a great thing to have, <laughs> but what are they and what do they look like? Well, they're, do they really look like little stones? They really do. They look like little stones, or depending on the size, they can look like little pebbles or, oh. even, or even like sand, if you will, almost sludge-like. Uh, but they form in the gallbladder, and they're made, made of different materials. Um, some of them can have calcium in them. They can have pigment from the bile that's produced from the liver. Uh, but they, they're kind of oblong or and irregular. And they're painful. In most, or in some cases, uh, not always. Okay. So they, they may or may not be painful. Generally speaking, if you have asymptomatic gallstones, so if you have gallstones that are not causing you any problems that were found on some sort of x-ray you had done for another reason, we don't do anything about that. We just like to know that they're there uh, in case oh. you do have problems in the future. But just because you have gallstones does not mean that we need to do something about them. Okay. I'm going to ask you maybe yeah. a pretty simple question and people may laugh at me at home. What does the gallbladder actually do for you? The gallbladder acts as a reservoir or kind of storage bag for bile. So bile is made in the liver uh, and helps with digestion. Well, typically when we're fasting, that um, there's a little valve. There's a tube that drains the liver down in the small intestine and typically that valve is closed. And so the bile will backfill into the gallbladder where it waits until you need it. And so when you eat, there's a series of hormone reactions that will stimulate the gallbladder to squeeze, that little valve opens up, and the bile empties into the intestine to help with digestion. Gosh, the body's amazing. It's isn't pretty it? incredible, yeah. How does one get a gallstone? Well, there's different risk factors for them. Um, generally speaking, women who are 40 or older, so female, 40 uh, ish in age, uh, fertility, so women who've had uh, babies, uh, something of the hormones of pregnancy. Um, can, can cause uh, or provoke uh, gallstones, um, uh, obesity. Um, really? some, uh, yeah, those are the main things we think of. How, is there a sign that I have one? Yes. So the, the <laughs> biggest thing is pain. So that's the biggest complaint we see is people who have abdominal pain. And the gallbladder is located under the, under the liver, which is kind of in the right upper quadrant. But most commonly, we see pain more in the middle. And that's just because of the way the nerves kind of supply that area or feed back to the brain from that area. So typically, we'll see pain in the middle of the belly, upper, upper abdomen, maybe in the right upper quadrant. And sometimes it radiates through to the back. So patients will tell you it maybe goes to their shoulder or maybe yeah. goes through to their back. And, and so pain and then nausea, vomiting. OK, on a pain level, how do we know that we have it, it varies. I really? mean, really, people may have very innocuous symptoms. They'll say, you know, they'll come in with a gallbladder attack where we, we have to do something about it. But they may have been having very mild symptoms for months before that. And typically, it's provoked by eating. It'll be very classic. I eat, and then a few minutes later, I'll develop this pain. Really? And it, it may be very mild initially. People might think it's indigestion or may just think Tummy it's a blo yeah, a little bloating or full sensation. So it can be or all the way up to, you know, very severe, 10 out and of 10 pain. crippling right. pain. How do we fix it? Uh, I see, I look at it like a little Star Wars machine right. and zapping all these yes. little rocks. So uh, classically, or in the years and years ago, there was medicines you could take to try to dissolve them. And there was different things you could do. But the, the best thing to do is just have the gallbladder taken out. We don't need our gallbladder to function. Oh. Uh, we, we don't need it to live. And so uh, the surgery for gallbladders nowadays uh, is, I don't perform that surgery, we'd refer to a general surgeon, but it's a pretty simple, easy procedure. I mean, outpatient takes 30 minutes or an hour. I had no idea. Yeah, and so you just take the gallbladder out and the stones are gone and you're done. But people say, oh, I've just passed a couple of stones. I'm like, yes. do you feel the stones Oh, going? yeah, that's, you know, the, and that kind of leads to where the complications of gall, gallstones come that's into play. That's what we know. Yeah, so uh, when you pass a stone, that's typically the, con the, the, um, the complications. Pancreatitis, uh, infection, the gallbladder can get irritated. So. Amazing. Yeah. You give me such great information. <laughs> Thank you. I, I swear I diagnose myself when we finish yes. these interviews. If you want to find out more information, there it all is up on the screen for you. Dr. Ricky Johnson from Gastroenterology Associates of Columbus. Back after this short break.